With all the madness going on in the world right now, one good thing is that it's given a lot of us who are currently stuck at home a chance to catch up on our gaming backlog, and it's a small comfort for gamers to know that at least they have some good news on the horizon in the form of the next generation of the console wars. Yes, that's right, not only is the long-awaited PlayStation 5 coming, but so is what will no doubt be their chief competitor, the Xbox Series X. This is so close now that we've gotten a full list of specifications for each console, and we thought it would be a nice distraction from the rest of the world for you all if we broke down how these consoles compared. It may even help you decide which one you're going to buy, though we suspect many of you are already either Sony or Microsoft for life by this point anyway. Maybe some of the luckier amongst you will be picking up both consoles and want to know which one to try out first. Either way, be sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell because today we're going to be looking at the Xbox Series X versus the PlayStation 5 head to head. Let's start off by briefly breaking down what each console can do before we compare them directly. The Xbox Series X will feature an 8-core, 16-thread processor with a maximum clock of 3.8GHz as well as an AMD Zen 2 processor and RDNA 2 graphics. The GPU is a 12 teflop GPU to help allow Microsoft to target 4K 60 frames per second gameplay. In terms of memory, it will include to have 16GB of 14GB per second GDDR6 shared between the CPU and GPU. But to further expand memory capabilities, Microsoft is also leveraging the extreme bandwidth of PCIe Gen 4 to expand system memory when needed, which will mean a big difference for how the console performs. There will be a 1TB custom SSD of internal storage with an available for purchase 1TB expansion card for extra storage. Additional USB storage will be supported and the console size specifications will be 301mm by length and 151 by height and depth. It will weigh 45 kilograms. Well now that some of the more technical stuff is out of the way, what about the rest? Well, it won't be capable of handling true 4K gameplay unfortunately, but it will be able to upscale games to such a level so that only the most argent of techies will be able to tell the difference. This is slightly disappointing since it doesn't appear to be what was initially advertised, but it seems that Sony have had similar problems with this, as we'll see later, so we have to dock both consoles a point for this one. Still, given that it will effectively be 4K gaming, we can't complain too much. Another feature that will be included is the much hyped ray tracing, which should see gameplay looking smoother than ever, given how glorious this has been shown to make things like lighting effects look damn good. This seems like a true game changer in many respects, in fact it would have been a massive loss for either consoles to miss out on having it. The Xbox Series X will also be fully backwards compatible, with all three previous Xbox generations being playable in a move that will no doubt come to the delight of all fans. Microsoft are also rumoured to be leveraging Project X Cloud game streaming to reduce installation times for games too, allowing you to jump into your titles before they're done installing them. As well as this, multiple games will now be able to use the saved in suspended states for instant resuming compared to the Xbox One which can currently only do this for one game at a time. When it comes to the controllers, they will be much the same, albeit perhaps a bit smaller and lighter this time around. By contrast, the PlayStation 5 will feature a custom 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU clocked at 3.5GHz and a custom GPU based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture hardware that promises 10.28 teraflops and 36 compute units clocked at 2.23GHz. It'll also have 16GB of GDDR6 RAM and a custom 825GB SSD that Sony has previously promised will offer super fast loading times in gameplay. On top of this, the PlayStation 5 will also use SSD storage for the console's hard drive which should see significantly faster load times, more than 8 times as fast in some cases, which is absolutely mind-boggling to think about. The console's capabilities will also allow it to download titles much faster this time around too, which everyone will be happy to hear as there are few things more frustrating than waiting for a huge game to finish downloading onto your hard drive so you can finally play it. Internal storage will be through a custom 825GB SSD with expandable storage available, and the PS5 will also support USB hard drives too, meaning you'll never run short of space, though those slower storage options will be recommended for backwards compatible games that will be available from previous generations only due to the smaller amount of space they will require. The previously announced 4K Blu-ray drive will be included, 
the new PlayStation won't support true 4K gaming, but will instead use an upscaling method. Sony has however promised that this hardware will eventually be able to support 8K gaming, and they hope to have 3D audio for a more immersive sound experience. For the record, Microsoft are also touting a similar feature, though they are calling it audio ray tracing. On that note, ray tracing will be included here too, highlighting just how much of a major feature this is going to be in the future of gaming, and as we mentioned, there will be backwards compatibility options, though at the moment this appears to be limited to PlayStation 4 games only. We're still waiting for word on whether or not earlier Sony titles will be available too, and we can only hope this will be the case. Sony have gone to great efforts to try and reduce fan whine on this console, and are reporting that it will run very quietly, if not silently. Again, this is something which should be mentioned that Microsoft is hoping to do too. There's no confirmation on whether or not cloud streaming will be an available feature on the PlayStation 5, though it is likely, and the PlayStation 5 controller will seek to improve its performance through haptic feedback that is capable of reproducing different sensations, such as car crashes, running through mud, and sports tackles. The triggers will also have adaptive resistance, so that actions like drawing a bow will feel different to firing a gun. No size or weight dimensions have been released for the console as of yet, though we can imagine they'll be pretty similar to Microsoft's effort. So now that we've got a bit of a better idea of how these two consoles stack up, how do they compare? Well, they're pretty similar to be honest, in many ways identical in fact. In terms of a lot of the technical aspects, both consoles actually run pretty much the same. As we mentioned before, Sony have gone with an 8x Zen 2 cores at 3.5GHz which will run at a variable frequency, while Microsoft have gone with the 8 cores at 3.8GHz custom Zen 2 CPU. GPUs will be at 10.28 teraflops, 36 CUs at 2.23GHz again running at a variable frequency, and 12 teraflops, 52 CUs at 8.125GHz from the PlayStation and Xbox respectively. And finally, both will run on the same GPU architecture of a custom RDNA 2. Breaking through the technical mumbo jumbo, it appears that the Xbox Series X has the slight edge here, though we do have to stress that it is slight. Both consoles are looking to utilize ray tracing and have similar solutions towards 4K gaming problem. Both also have similarly sized additional storage options, so as you can see there's not a lot in it. 3D audio appears to be a feature that both companies have thought of too, though they are calling it by different names, and both consoles are set to run quietly and as environmentally efficient as possible. When it comes to backwards compatibility, we're tenuously giving Microsoft the edge as they have confirmed all previous Xbox generation titles will be available, though this could change with further future announcements from Sony on the topic. We also give Microsoft the win on cloud gaming, allowing us to download games faster as they have once again formally announced this will be a feature, though it is expected that Sony will do the same if not similar before release. Where we can give Sony the edge is through their haptic controller system, which appears to be a huge step forward and something that Microsoft has been left lagging behind on. It's enough to make us wonder if they won't be developing something similar themselves after hearing about what Sony has to offer the next generation of gamers. As of now we can't compare size and weight, as we're still waiting on the PlayStation 5 specs on this, and both price brackets and release dates are still unknown. It was rumoured that these would be announced for each console at this year's E3 event in March, but since that has been cancelled due to the ongoing concerns around the world, we'll have to adopt a wait and see attitude to when this information might be coming out. Hopefully it won't be too long though. If these consoles are indeed set to be released sometime this year, then they're going to have to get that information out there soon, whether it be in the form of an online announcement or quiet press conferences. Overall on paper, it looks like the Xbox Series X is ever so slightly the more impressive next-gen console on a technical level, however we have to stress again that the difference are minute in many respects and both will be very similar upon release. If there is a winner to be had here, it's gamers across the world who will have two fantastic console options to choose from, as both will be a major upgrade and a serious step forward into the future when compared to previous generations. Which one you choose to buy will no doubt lay with your current allegiances, but if you've been a Sony fan up until now, you'll likely go for the PlayStation 5, and if you're a Microsoft fan, the Xbox Series X will probably seem more attractive. It's hard to see many people switching sides here, but we're just happy to see that the gaming industry's future looks as healthy and cutting edge as it does, as it makes things better for all of us, and isn't that what we need more in the world right now? people coming together and enjoying all things that we have at our fingertips. And if any of you are planning on picking up both consoles, let us know in the comments down below. But there you have it guys, our look at the Xbox Series X versus the PlayStation 5. 
Be sure to leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more video game content.